everybody, Scout here again. It's Mishmash Monday. We are at the Frank Brush Barn in Long Island for our uh, every other month Long Island Antique Tool Collecting Society meet. This is where a bunch of old timers get together and we sell some of the stuff that we hoarded for the past years. So uh, I thought I'd bring you along for a little while, check out, see what some of the guys are selling. And it's a beautiful day here and this is such beautiful grounds over here. Uh, they even have goats in the back uh, taking care of the lawn so they don't have to mow it. So let's go inside, see what they have and maybe you'll see something you like. Now sometimes guys will put out a tarp and not even be by it in the parking lot and they'll put a sign up for a buck and they'll have a little cup there. If you see something you like, you just take a dollar, put it in the cup and you take whatever you like. Uh, really nice bunch of guys, very honest. Now here it is 5 o'clock. Now the show don't start officially, the meeting don't start till 6 and you can see by 5 o'clock already some guys are making some, you know, deals and uh... That's why you got to get there early. All tool shows, everybody tries to get there just a little bit earlier each time. Now here we are at almost 5.30 and uh, you can see now already it's starting to get a little built up. Uh, there's more and more people here and already there's some good deals being made. So. If you thought you were getting there early at 6 o'clock, you know, a lot of things are already missing. So try and get there early if you can. Well, we were lucky enough, Charlie the Wonder Dog showed up. Uh, Dan was in the parking lot. He was giving some instruction on uh, some of his Manson-type lathes. He has one of the largest collections uh, in the world of these little lathes. And uh, this was just a beautiful example. We'll talk more about that. Now, here it was, 10 after 6. The show is in full force, and everybody's having a great time. Here we are with Steve and Steve admiring uh, Steve's collection of little vices he had and they brought down. And uh, some of these were real nice. I, I came so close to bringing a couple of these home because they just they were just such nice examples. Here was a vice that a couple people looked at, a nice five inch craftsman, but the only problem is, you guessed it, made in China so that uh, that's kind of a disappointment so we had a good time and Charlie gave his stamp of approval okay, that was a lot of fun we had a good time at the show and uh all right, next up on the mosh is uh, Ricky McFadden had asked a question that I know a lot of people are wondering about. Their, uh, their uh, motor is running a little bit out of, uh, out of balance because of some of the wheels they're putting on. Let's address that for a little now, while. Now, many times when you buy a buffer or grinder, you'll have what they call a stepped shaft. 
which means that the shaft is one diameter. It steps down to a slightly smaller diameter that you could mount your stone or your uh, wire wheel or your buffing pad on. Now, in this case, um, we have like a 5 8 stepping down to a half inch. This is about a half inch diameter. Now, uh, typically what you would do is when you buy a buffing pad or something, you would look for something that has a, a half inch diameter for this type machine. And this way it'll fit on nice and snug like that with no play up and down, no back and forth play, because this hole is the same diameter as the shaft. Now, if you do, some of the bigger machines have a 5 8 shaft. So this might be a, a 7 8 or 1 inch shaft drop, uh, dropping down to a 5 8. Now, uh, the bigger machines that have a 5 8 inch shaft, which is better, the bigger it is, the better. But um, now you might have a problem because uh, you see, when you buy a uh, typically when you buy a, um, a wire wheel or something the homeowner style wire wheels will come looking like this and what happens is you'll see there's a little plastic bushing in there you see that little plastic bushing well it this has a five eighths of an inch hole a, a slightly larger hole and the bushing takes up that space and drops it down to a half inch so you don't have any play on there now what happens if you don't have one of these bushings you happen to come across a big wheel and you need to mount it on a smaller shaft now often what you'll see is they typically buffers or they'll come with these type of washers these are called like a flange washer and you can see it has kind of a, a, an unusual profile to it and how this works is it'll slip over here it'll, it'll set nicely against the uh, back larger stepped uh, part of the shaft you put your buffer wheel on and then you put this one on here and then tighten up the uh, the screw and that'll give a nice sandwich to your whatever you're putting on here um, you don't have to use these, you know, I typically a lot of times I'll use this type here, but whatever you're going to use, you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of uh, uh, too much play between the washer and the shaft because uh, then you can have some wobble because it's out of now, balance. The best case scenario is you get a, let's say you're working with a buffer wheel. Uh, you would get a buffer wheel that's a little bit smaller. This way, it, you know, you can really, you know, press it on like this and get a really good fit. And you don't have to worry about any wobble back and forth because once that's on there, that's solid. Now, if you should come across a wheel that's a little bit larger, you need to put a bushing. Now, just because you have these washers on each side, a lot of people think that's enough to hold it steady. But if there's a gap between the shaft and the pad or the shaft and the wire wheel, that'll give you an imbalance. Now, let's say that this was a wheel you wanted to mount on here. And obviously, this hole is, there's too much slop here. You see, that's too much play so much so that it even goes over this part but so you say okay well i'll just put this washer here i'll put this one here and i'll put this one here and sandwich it and that'll hold it but it won't because what happens is as you're using it and the centrifugal force turns around this might pull up or down or shift one way and it's never going to be uh true it's never going to run true it's always going to give you a wobble what you have to do is you have to take up the space between the shaft and the wheel you can't have any of that now how do we do well, that in a perfect world we would go over to the uh, lathe and we would take a piece of delrin or a piece of aluminum and we would drill out a half an inch for the inner shaft and whatever the outside shaft of that pulley was and make a bushing but, you know, not everybody has a lathe or time. And how can we do this without a Now, lathe? you could use tape, but tape is expensive and there's no reason to waste your tape. So get something that's about the same thickness, a little bit smaller, but the same thickness uh, of the wheel that you're going to put on here. And then what you would do is, uh, once you're, you got to put that on first because it won't fit over afterwards. Um, place the tape on here like this and then this is just a piece of paper just magazine paper roll it up like this nice and tight and uh, it'll build up a thickness and just keep building up that thickness now that's very dense when it's on there now once you have a thick enough piece of paper around it or two or three strips of paper there is no play on there whatsoever there is it is tight and all it is it's just made up of multiple layers of paper you could see and paper is very dense when it's tightly wound so you don't have to worry about anything and uh and that's it that's how you can build it up without any cost here's another issue that uh can be a problem when you do is buffing wheels now you see this wheel here i was doing some aluminum mr pete's drill and what happens with aluminum it tends to clog the wheel you see that now this wheel has like a haze to it a shine you could look if you look real close 
you could see it's uh, this isn't good and it has a, a weird feel to it this is when it has to be dressed the wheel has to be dressed and how you do that with a buffing wheel uh, I showed this before but you basically take an old saw like this and the last couple teeth here you can see I've been using it for a while but the last couple teeth you touch the teeth to the saw and that'll uh, loosen up and get rid of a lot of this let me show you what it looks like Okay, now you can see only after a couple seconds of running it over the uh, teeth of the saw, you see it took out that haze, it exposed new fibers, and uh, this, this wheel is starting to show its uh, life because it has a lot of compound impregnated, but you can see here now that it definitely brought it back and it'll make it much better for when I use it again next time. But that, when you see it getting hazed up like that, you gotta dress your wheel. Now a lot of times when you first mount your wheel on, there's always gonna be a little bit of imbalance. However, that's just something that as you wear the wheel in, it'll kind of find its center, you know, as you're using it, especially these, these buffing wheels, you know, they tend to wear more on the side that's sticking out, so it'll wear itself okay, last in. up on this subject, I'd like to show you about oiling your bearings. Now, even though they say these are sealed bearings and everything, there's no such thing as a, a truly sealed bearing. Uh, you have, they do require a little bit of oil and maintenance every once in a while. So when you spin this, if it spins like this, it spins freely. But if you spin it and it comes to an abrupt stop, it means your bearing's a little bit uh, tight, a little bit dry. Here's how you do it without taking the whole machine apart. The first thing you do is run a vacuum, if you have one, around here to suck out any debris that might be in that, uh, that area. Once you vacuum the area and there's no dust or anything, uh, take some WT-40 on a piece of paper towel and rub the area over here. Get rid of any dirt that might, you see that little dirt? Just get rid of any dirt around the bearing shaft that you can get into, uh, as much as you can get in. Just make sure there's no dirt in there and wipe that all nice and clean right around the where the shaft enters the motor. Next up, uh, try and get some 3-in-1 motor oil. This is a specifically made motor oil, SAE 20, that's 20 weight, made for these motors, and uh, it's great. You can pick it up anywhere. They sell 3-in-1 products, usually Lowe's, things like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to drip some next to the shaft, but you're going to tilt the motor up. Okay, here we're tilting the motor up to one side, and you're going to put a couple drops right around the shaft. You'll see a wick right into the shaft. Give it a couple spins. Do the same thing again, couple drops, give it a couple spins, and then you're going to wipe off the excess with a piece of paper. After towel. you wipe it and you, you ran it for a couple seconds, you'll see it's very smooth. That's how you lubricate bearings that really can't be lubricated. But uh, that's I've been doing that for years on all my machines. And, uh, and you can tell when it starts to get a little bit tight because it won't spin freely. So that's when you hit it with some. Okay, next up, I was at Elephant Trunk Flea Market the other day, and I saw these and... I love these. I love this style. It's a good size. It's a perfect size. I think it's a Croida, probably a 1500 series, and but there's no name on it, obviously. Not that I could see now, but it's got the nice handles. It's got the thick handles as far as not thick this way, but wide this way, and it's very comfortable in the hand. Just a good size. I like the three cut. These three type cutters are awesome. They're all in good shape. Everything's in good shape. The George just needs some cleaning up, right? I mean, We've done worse than this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hit it real quick and uh, put this thing back in service. This is a nice, really nice pair of pliers. I paid $10 for this and a 1977 Hess truck. Sweet. And we're calling this project done. Now, if you're wondering why, you're saying, boy, this he usually takes it down to a better shine than this, you know. But guess what? I would just do it. I did my post wire brush evaluation. This is why you always do your wire brush before you start on the belt sander. And look what we have here. These are Winchester pliers, and that makes them about three times more valuable than your regular croid not that they're you know crazy valuable but you know we have a a thing here with the program we don't we don't mess up any tools that some people find collectible or whatever but you know we, we like to mess with the tools that are very common and this one isn't so common so i had to leave 
this is just the way they like it. The the collectors of uh, Winchester and stuff, they like their, you know, they like the forge marks and but it's you know, I took all the rust and, and the neural. It's got the beautiful handles. Look at the embellishment on that handle, huh? It's so comfortable and there's no dings, no dents, so it's it's really nice. Uh it's got a little bit of uh, you know, shelf wear <laughs> as we call it. But again, Winchester, that makes all the difference. That's where you have to put the brakes on. Because anytime you see a, a name that might mean it's a valuable tool, then you, you just don't want to take it to the belt sander right away and do your homework. Anyway, that one's uh, that came up pretty good. It's very smooth, very nice. It works like a charm, and uh, but it's uh, you know different than what I usually do. What do you think about that? So in closing, I just want to say uh, don't forget that Wednesday, day after tomorrow, the Clam Challenge premiere is due, July 3rd. So. Uh, so far, I got a couple entries in. They all look absolutely fantastic. So looking forward to If you have any photos you want to send me, send it to my email address. I'll have it at the end of the video and at the beginning of the video. So thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye. Products, usually Lowe's, things like that. This is a SAE 20. It's a spe specifically...